Southern lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back for another brand new video. Don't mind him. He's my favorite YouTuber. Don't, don't mind him. He's my favorite YouTuber. My favorite content creator. Don't mind him. James Alcott. Don't mind him. But lads, we are going to be looking at the six things we learned from that game Arsenal 0 to Liverpool. That means Arsenal played Liverpool four times this season and we have failed to score against them in a single game. We have not scored a goal against Liverpool this campaign despite the fact that we played them four times. We've lost three of that, conceded eight goals and drawn one. And that was in the Carabao Cup where Xhaka was sent off 8 and 0 0 when. Uh, we went for the second leg. It was a, an absolute demolition by Diogo Jota. Now, Jota has, interestingly, he has scored now um, four goals, I think five goals against Arsenal ever since joining Liverpool. Quite, you know, quite uncomfortable for me to say, but that is the truth. Jota has been a really, really, really outstanding uh, for Liverpool against Arsenal. But, you know, so is uh, any other, uh, you know, uh, Liverpool forward. Roberto Firmino scored, uh, I think, eight, nine goals, um, uh, you know, in, in, in 14 appearances against Arsenal. Uh, Salah the same, you know, Mane. All of them are really outstanding when it comes to Vars and Liverpool. But what we saw yesterday, lads, we saw a very different kind of Arsenal. We saw a very, very consistent Arsenal. We saw a, you know, a spirited performance, a spirited Arsenal. So what did we learn and what exactly do we need to take away from that performance as we go into the weekend? Three days later, we take on Aston Villa. What did we learn that we can actually use to beat Aston Villa in that game? Do me a huge favor and a massive one. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the comment section, and tell me, do you think Arsenal are really now on the right road? Because are we have we taken the right path? Because yesterday, with all respect, we lost beautifully. We played well, we created chances, we ran through the spaces, we had very good patterns of passing. The only thing that we missed in that game was a goal. And goals win games, and because we didn't score, we definitely couldn't win but number one lads is that there is a lot of improvement in this team we've got to agree i've seen many arsenal sides and a sun Wenger and a uni emery and a friend loom bag and it's crazy that was not even an arsenal side of it for him and under Mikel Arteta, and I think you know it's right. It's only right to say that under Sun Wenger, we saw different kinds of Arsenal: the good Arsenal, the possessive Arsenal, the trash Arsenal, um, the average Arsenal, the superior Arsenal, and everything like that. And I, I think we have really improved a lot ever since Sun Wenger, uh, Sun Wenger's last days, and the days during Unai Emery of, of you know of the Unai you know Unai Emery era. We have really really improved a lot when you look at that game yesterday i mean it, it's only an excuse to say that um you know we were the better you know better team we were not the better team liverpool with all because it's, it, it was a game where you needed something special and liverpool produced special things from uh, tiago jota and and Roberto Firmino. But we have really improved a lot. If you look, if you go back to the beginning of this year, Manchester City 2, Arsenal 1, again, you can see, and Mikelata spoke about it yesterday, that we have really improved to the, to the level that we can take the game to the level of Liverpool, to the level of Manchester City. And arguably, those are the two best teams in the world right now. For me, lads, I, I, we, look, we, when we versus Chelsea, we will talk about Chelsea. I'm not afraid of Chelsea. They, they beat us, you know, in the opening fixture. Tony Romelu Lukaku getting on the score sheet. I think with uh, together with Rhys James. But I'm not at any point in time afraid of Chelsea. Liverpool, Manchester City for me. That is the gauge. That is the standard. If you can beat City, if you can play well against City, it's not only the result, but can you? play you know in a spirited way can you work hard can you you know be able to be yourselves can you put up you know can you put together uh, a pattern of passes can you be consistent can you implement the ideas that you've got from the training ground uh, on the pitch despite the fact that you're playing a huge side like liverpool i think we did that and i think we really really did it well the only problem i think we had there is that uh we have not yet 
mastered the art uh, of, of the 4 2 3 1 and 4 3 3 like Liverpool have. And, and you saw it uh, yesterday. They could change combinations all the time, they switched play all the time very, very swiftly. They were very, very dynamic in their moves. Arsenal are not yet there. We were a little bit flat, we were a little bit simple. The dynamism is still not there. But mark my words, lads, we've improved. And if we move on, on this pace, it's going to be very, very different come next season. Number two, lads, is Gabriel Martinelli was outstanding and he's a superstar. I think every team needs a superstar. Salah in Liverpool, Debron in Manchester uh, City, uh, Bruno Fernandes and Ronaldo at United, Son and Kane at Spurs. Oh, we also need a superstar. And I think, lads, we have a superstar. But what I want to say about Gabriel Martinelli in, in yesterday's performance, he's not afraid... He's brave. He really, really is not afraid of big games. I think that you, you know, look, in, in most times, the euphoria a team like Arsenal has uh, after winning five games is, you know, is shut down by the fact that you're playing Liverpool. Uh, it, it becomes a very gloomy environment. It becomes a scary, you know, environment. It takes, um, it takes a lot of courage you need to be brave uh when you're playing a team like liverpool and we saw players like martin odegaard who i think was actually affected by the magnitude of the game because there is no other reason there's no other explanation uh you you can give for martin odegaard not being on top form he's been really w very very good for uh the past three uh, the, the the past five months uh, sorry five matches six uh six, six games he was affected by the magnitude of the game. Despite, when we were in possession, he was sloppy. He was not you know, in, in his real self. And in, even in tracking back, I thought he was actually not doing very well. But, because, look, if you look at this video, James Alcott, two days ago, he says, Martin Odegaard, I love you. And, I, I, you know, and that is when we had played Leicester City. He literally destroyed um, and tore apart Leicester City. So, so lads, um, I think Martinelli, you've got to give him a lot of credit you know, for that. You need big game players in your team. You need uh, those players that are able to stand uh, you know, the pressure, uh, you know, the, the results from the magnitude of South Games. Martinelli was very, very good. I think Alex and it was also okay. But he's always been a game player, hasn't he? Uh, I think our back line have, you know, were, were absolutely fantastic. Kian Tierney was also very good. But Martinelli was outstanding. And I think... In, you know, in, in all the big, you know, in, in all the big game players, we have we have Gabby Martinelli. He's a superstar, lads, and we saw it yesterday as well. Number three, lads, is um Aaron Ramsdale mistakes and errors are part of the game. Now, we, I, I've already said this, and I will say it again. Young players like Aaron Ramsdale, young players like Gabriel, Ben White, Odegaard, they always learn from their mistakes. They're always gonna commit these mistakes, and. You know, mark my words, even players that are experienced like Harry Maguire have become a problem to their team. So, there's so many times when Aaron Ramsdale has actually saved us. There's so many times when Aaron Ramsdale has been the difference between Arsenal and the other side. But for that to happen consistently on a consistent basis, um, you've got to give him lots and lots of credit for a young goalkeeper who's moved from the championship, not really from the championship, from who we've signed from uh, a relegation side that is Sheffield. He comes into the Premier League and he has, you know, taken us to the top four. We have no right. We definitely have no right, uh, you know, to be in the top four. But you know, he's done that. I think we've got to be a little bit grateful. At times, it's not all about criticism, lads. At times, it's all about realizing that at times you have a bad day in office. Yes, I understand. It was a very, very bad day uh, to have a bad day in office, but. It happens. And even before that, I think it was not that bad. Yes, uh, the second goal and the first goal, you think he could have done better. You know, you know, he set the bar too high. And that is what I love about Aaron Ramsdale. He has set the bar too high, for, not only for uh, his defense, but also himself. That when such goals go past him, we are angry. So, ladies and lads, Aaron Ramsdale mistakes are part of the game. They're always going to happen. It's, it's, Gabriel has made a mistake uh, this season against Wolves, and we conceded. Yesterday, it was Aaron Ramsdale's positioning, and Jota got a goal. Uh, got, a, got the first goal. Uh, ben White has made mistakes against Brentford, and we conceded. Uh, pa Thomas Partey made a mistake against Aston Villa, and we conceded. Jack has made multiple mista mistakes, and we conceded. But the, the, the point is... These mistakes are here to teach us 
and we learn from them. I think, you know, Ramsdale is a super keeper. Ramsdale is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Anyone who comes out to Troy uh, or troll Ramsdale is an absolute, absolute idiot. He was very, very okay yesterday. The mistake, take it away. Take away the mistake. He was okay uh, yesterday. But of course, mistakes are really, really part of the game. Number four, lads. Arsenal need a good striker. This one is not a no this one is a non-negotiable. This one is not negotiable. We need a good striker. I think the runs of Gabriel Martinelli, the runs of uh, Bukayo Saka will be more useful. They will be better if we, you know, if at the end of the day there is someone we are actually feeding. There is someone we are uh, actually you're looking at as a target man. Yes, we didn't get Dusan Velhovic in January, but there's so many other strikers out there. We need to get a very, very good one. We need to get someone who's uh, clinical. Yesterday, I looked at Alexander Lacazette's uh, movement, and I was disgusted to some point in time. Very, very good at holder play, but yesterday... The game didn't actually need any girl, you know, build to play because we were right. We were building. Uh, we, we were building right from the back. That is how we did. You know, that is how we did our build up uh, when we got the chance to. And Lacazette, his role was to position himself very well so that these chances actually uh, fall onto his feet. Martinelli, uh, there was a time you know, in the second half. You know, he puts up, you know, he puts, uh, you know, uh, he puts in a, a, a cutback, and, and and you think any good striker meets that. But like I said, is actually coming to the near post, and I'm like, you have lots of space behind you, you have lots of space um, in the middle of goal. Why don't you wait there patiently? As a striker, you need to have that patience. You need to be able to, uh, you know, score those tappings. That is how the likes of Vlahovic score their goals. It's the Tarpins. Ronaldo is the Tarpins. Ken is the Tarpins. And I think we need someone like Harry Kane. We need someone like Arlen Harlan. We need someone like Dusan Vlahovic. We need someone like Oli Watkins. But of course, let's... Um, that's another lesson that I really saw uh, in that game as well. Um, and then number five, we need to take up chances in big games. This is, a, uh, this is a point that I've already spoken about. And I'll keep saying it over and over again. City, when they equalized, we got um, a chance. I think it was Martin, I think it was Gabriel Martinelli. Open goal, then he slashes it wide. And then City go ahead to score uh, late, late in that game through Lodre. Right. Then yesterday, we missed a chance. Very, very open chance. And that was um, uh, uh, Martinelli cutting it back uh, and like I said, failing to score. And then Odegaard as well, um, having the goal, you know, having to beat, just to beat the goalkeeper uh, and, and the two defenders in, in between the goalposts. We missed that chance. Those are two chances gone and Liverpool scored too. And at the end of the game, as it was, uh, I think it was 88 minutes, Martinelli gets a very, very good chance set, you know, set up by Granny Jaka and then he doesn't score that. It's game over. We need to start putting away our chances. We need to score our chances. We need to create these chances, but we also need to score them, especially in big games because you don't get so many against these big ties. I mean, go back and rewatch Arsenal Norwich, Arsenal Brentford second leg, uh, Arsenal um, uh, um, um, Wolves. How many chances do these teams get against us? It's the same story when we play Liverpool and City. We need to take our chances and we need to do it very, very well. And number six, final lads. It's an apology. I'm really sorry to Mikel Arteta. Yesterday I was watching this video how the 4-3-3 th uh, four, three, three and 4-2-3-1 four, systems operate. And that's when I, I realized that the problem was not with Mikel Arteta. The problem was with what he was trying to teach and the batch of players he was actually trying to teach to you know, teach the quality of the likes of um Leno, Kolasinak, Bellerin, Robolding, they literally cannot play a 4-3-3. They literally cannot play a 4-2-3-1, more than 4-2-3-1. They can't do that because those are two systems that require a lot of hard work. Those are two st systems that require a lot of knowledge, especially if you're going to play zone of football like Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta. And if you look at how we are playing um, these days, it's much of a zone of play. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's much of a uh, you know a tactical zone of formations. 
Arsenal having the, to build the ball f right from the back. Roboting is already left out, of, you know, uh, left out of that. Um, and then progress that ball to the midfield. As you, as we progress to the midfield, our you know our our our, our full backs, our wing backs have actually progressed up high the field it, it, it's so difficult um and um, I, I will de definitely one day do a video of how arsenal are playing under Mikel Arteta, the tactical formations everything like that i'm still investing my time in understanding these formations and why it was so hard for the likes of squadron mustafi socrates papastopoulos to actually feed in smash a like on the video do subscribe to the channel and let me know of any other thoughts you thought um you had in that match or lessons you learned